Okay, now we are going to start the this session. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May peace be upon us all. Shalom, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, greetings of all virtue. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Duta BPJS Kesehatan all over in Indonesia. It's good to see you all here again in this lovely afternoon. Welcome everyone to the first semi-final match of the Initiative National Debate Competition or INDC 2023. Yay. It's finally, we are finally in semi-final. We are come really far from to here. So today we will witness an exciting match between General Atomics as the affirmative house versus Holyoke team as the negative house. Okay. Remember, because today is the final, the winner of today's match will proceed to the grand final next week. So prepare yourself, um, give a good debate, give all your best, and may the, all the odds be ever in your favor to both teams. And also to the audience, to all the, all the audience, the chat box is all yours as usual. Everyone is open and everyone is free to give your support and cheer to your favorite team. But remember to keep it a safe space, keep it positive and be kind. So it's open to fill out our chat box with your support, okay? Okay, before we start, I will introduce myself. I am Siti Sakila Shahnas, or Sasa, from MSDM, uh, BPJS Kesehatan Headquarters. I will be your moderator for today and will lead this session until the very end. And I will, I'm with Corporate, Corporate University to help me operate and timer for today's session. Okay. Now we have two teams that have joined since, or since the Zoom open. Allow me to introduce them. The first team is General Atomic as the affirmative house. Hello, General Atomics. Hello. Okay, the first speaker is Miss Ani Rahmayani. Hello, Miss. How are you today? Hello. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, thank God. And then we have Nick, Miss Nick and Umur Rehana as the second speaker. Hello, Miss. How are you today? Uh, hello, I'm fine today. How about you? I'm good, thank you. And then the last but not least, the third speaker from General Atomics is Mr. Ida Bagus Made Dwi Indrawan. Hello, how are you today? Hello, I'm very good today, thank you. Ah, good to hear that. And then we have Mr. Iwan Kurnia as their Honorable Counselor. Hello, sir, are you here today? Hello, great to meet you all. Oh, sir. What do you have something to say for your team today? No, thank you. <laughs> no, no, thank you. <laughs> okay. Then we will move to the opposition house, which is Holly Team. Hello, Holly Team. Hello. Hi. We have Miss Yovita Fiananda Sari as the first speaker of the whole U team. Hello, Miss. How are you? Hi, I'm very good. Thank you. Ah, good to hear that. And then the second speaker of the whole U team is Miss Fatin Mutiara Dani. Hello, Miss. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, it's already almost evening there. <laughs> And then the third speaker from the whole new team is Miss Nurul Anisa. Hello, Miss. How are Hello, you? thank you for asking. I'm fine. Good to hear that. And then we have Miss Chiang Tikamarini as their honorable consular. Hello, Miss. Are you present right now? Uh, hello, hi everyone. Do you have any message for your team for today's uh, debate? No, just give your best uh, to uh debate discussion okay your best your best everyone okay now i will in i would like to introduce our incredible adjudicators different from previous matches now we have four adjudicators because this is a semi final so you might see that this is getting serious and getting interesting so the first adjudicator is mr iwan shagani hello sir how are you 
Hello, yeah, just fine. Thank you for asking, Sasa. Hello, everyone. Don't be yeah. nervous. Just do your best. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> and then we have the second adjudicator is Mr. Arif Budiman. Hello, sir. Hello, Shasa. Hello, everyone. Do you have any message for the spe the speakers? Oh, same with Mr. Iwan. Do the best okay. and break leg for the board of houses. Thank you. Okay, and then we have Miss Dena. Hello, Miss. Hello. Hi, debaters. Happy debating. Okay. And then the last adjudicator is Mr. Asrul. Hello, sir. Hello. Do you have Good something luck, to say? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now that everyone give your best and give the adjudicators a very good debate. Okay, and also thank you once again for joining this session on time. Before we start, I will once again read some small rules for all the participants. The first is that no participants are allowed to open their microphones before their own turn. So wait for your own turn, okay? And then the operator may do the, nece the, the necessary thing to make sure that the session will run smart, smoothly. Okay. So our, today, our motion for today's match is this house believes that Indonesia should stop implementing direct voting for presidential election. To the old audience, this means uh, you probably know this as Pemilu. So this will be a very hard motion to debate. The definition is that direct vote means that voters choose the candidate for presidency, while indirect votes means the voter vote the party who will elect the president. What houses shall avoid any other issues rather than, rather than direct and indirect election? The challenge will be that the House that we need to convince the judges that indirect voting brings more benefit than direct voting. Is everyone clear already about the motion? So I guess everyone is already ready to start the debate, okay? Use your time well, do your best because this is a semi-final, so this is really close to the final, guys. Okay. Now we are going to start. The first chance of speaking comes to the first speaker of the affirmative side. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, your time begins once you start speaking. Uh, thanks for the moderator and good evening to the judges and the negative team allow me to attend uh, to open debate. Uh, the main idea is that Indonesia should stop implementing direct voting for the presidential uh, election. An election is a process with the voters use the right to the vote by choosing their representative. They act the party voting the elect the their two system including the namely the one is direct and indirect. The direct election system refers to the electing political office holders in which the voter directly from the person concerned of the party they wish to elect. Indirect election system refers to voting in which uh, electorate in the election doesn't select the candidate for office but they select the person who will then make the final choice in the world. Uh, the public decision direct vote in the method instead to put the decision in the hands of others. But the mean of indirect election in this, uh, presidential uh, election through the representative with the appointed by the people in practical example in the electoral college system in the US, we have the trying to describe and adopt in system in Indonesia. At the post voters is not for the presidential candidate, but also candidates uh, from members of the electoral college with the camp on political party uh, for the uh, profile electoral is already passed for fit and proper. Test by DPD uh, also has to acknowledge as a uh, need the, their people. And from the US election system, it's a uh, city of province in Indonesia choose their representative or uh, electoral for the secretly without any others intervention from MPR, DPR, or DPD, which are still serving the nation. But the number of representatives are uh, electoral voters and uh, its province is called provisional 
directly from the number of DPD or DPR who still serving in Jakarta. With the system like this, when they determine with the candidate is running, the political party elites will consider because all the them have the balanced beginning position. They hope this will encourage the elite choose the candidate who can fulfill the provincy for broke the representative. The indirect electoral system is also laying the foundation of the country. Pancasila number four, the democracy led by deliberative and representative expertise where the world show the people trust their representative to get people leaders who meet the criteria and with the weakness of the direct election as the practice of one, money politics, black campaigns, and high political uh, cause. Offense of indirect put the election of national leaders is more informed, less violent, chaos, intimidation, does an encourage of fraud, less costly given the small number of the people voting. Thank you. Thank you to the first speaker. And yes, I'm, I'm sorry. enough. Thank you. I'm sorry because there is a little bit technical problems that the timer isn't show up, but you are using your time very well. Wait, I will coordinate first with the corpu. Okay, now we can continue to the first speaker of the negative house. Your time begins once you start speaking. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good evening honorable educators and all the audiences. Since the first speaker of the affirmative team didn't define the motion properly and comprehensive, me as the first speaker of the negative team would like to redefine our motion today so that our debate is going to the right direction. First thing first, Indonesia is a unitary state with a republican form of government based on the valid constitution, namely the 1945 Constitution of the Republic of Indonesia. DPR, DPD, and President are nominated and then elected through general election. Second point to be mentioned about the motion is direct voting. Direct voting is a system for electing political office holders, including president, in which voters are the citizen of Indonesia and directly vote for the candidate. The voter must be over the age of 17 who can elect the president directly. After Indonesia became independent on August 17, 1945, it was clear that the duet of the Tunga leaders, Sukarno and Muhammad Hatta, had declared Indonesia independent as a democratic country because in the last sentence it said in the text of the proclamation was atas nama bangsa Indonesia. When associated with the definition nation, then what is mean is all the people of Indonesia. So Indonesian independence is independence that is reserved for Indonesian people themselves. Furthermore, the implementation of indirect voting for president in Indonesia need further con consideration because first, the citizens' constitutional rights matter. During the new order era, the president was elected to consensus deliberation by members of MPR. The MPR has the authority to vote because it is the highest state institution whose members consist of all members of DPR. From there, it is known that the people do not directly elect the president but through the MPR. This led to political turmoil in 1998 after students protested President Suharto's 30 years term of leadership period. The public also demands that the election system and mechanism be replaced so that people can choose their own president. 
the right to vote and vote is also affirmed in Putusan MK No. 1117 in 2003, the constitutional right of citizen, namely having the right to vote and being elected, are rights guaranteed by the Constitution, laws, and international convention. Any action, as long as citizens have met the requirements and then being inhibited and obstructed, this will be something that is contradictive to the Constitution. Second, Political of interest matters. With direct voting system, the citizen will understand the purpose of for which election are held. So they will be more critical in risking their rights. This is one of the pillars of stable political system for Indonesian nation. A public official, which is president, who has brought and strong support from the people will carry out the function of state power in order to achieve country's goals. They will feel bound by the voice of the people and fight for the interests of the people, not for their own interests. Also, the citizen will be more rational in making choices. There will be no space specifically group within a party as a guarantee of being in power forever as the leader of the country. Moreover, if people's rights are handed over the institution, there is a very high possibility that the institution entrusted with sovereignty will abuse it in a way that divides from the will of dissident. Because of this reason, our house strongly believes that Indonesia should not stop the implementation of direct voting presidential election. Thank you. Thank you very much to the Gatak House. Now we will let the educators taking notes from your debate. Okay, now we can continue to the second speaker of the affirmative house. Your time begins once you start speaking. <laughs> Thank you to moderators. Good afternoon, the honorable of judicators and ladies and gentlemen. This house believes that Indonesia should stop implementing direct voting for presidential election. Why we can and should implement this motion? Because direct voting has been implemented in Indonesia for four times in 2004, 2009, 2014, and the last in 2019. And during that time, the fraud cases are increasingly found. Based on Bawaslu report in the last presidential election in 2019, there are 16,134 administrative violations, 3,703 ethical violations, and 532 criminal events. This data shows that presidential election with direct voting before still needs to be improved a lot. Besides that, we also have to minimize about the various cases that have been found before, like the article that Harun in 2020 mentions. The first is, abstain faults still happened, especially for millennial generation. The percentage of abstain for presidential election is still high enough with almost at 20% in 2019. The second is, contrary from point one, party politics can buy the fake voters to win the election. And the third is, money politics when people get some money or basic and essential needs from the candidates to vote them. However, this system will keep in use for the next presidential election in 2024. Actually, there is a solution for all the cases that can be implemented. As the first speaker said before, we can adopt the indirect voting for presidential election with electoral college from United States of America. Because the geographic culture people of our country is the same as in the USA, which is multiracial and linguistic. So we can also maintain the legitimacy of the votes in Indonesia, then can minimize the leakage of fake voters. And the next is the evidence of the electoral college has performed its function for over 20 hundred years and in over 50 presidential election by ensuring that the president of the United States has but sufficient popular support to govern and distribute throughout the country and finally enables to govern effectively. The evidence practiced by Gallup is specifically based on amending the U.S. Constitution, 
The polling company Gallup has been asking U.S. voters about their views on the Electoral College since 1948, and specifically whether they support replacing it with direct popular national election of the president since 1967. They have found consistent majorities in favor of both, as high as 80% for indirect election. And then, when the Electoral College again hand victory to a Republican presidential candidate who had lost the popular vote, causing support for abolishing the Electoral College to fall sharply enough among Republican voters to bring the total level of support across all voters down to 49%. Nevertheless, this was still above the 47% who expressed explicit support for the status quo. Forest take a more nuanced view of how direct popular election should be implemented. From the negative speaker said before, their voting of presidential election must be reviewed more. So we believe that this electoral college system's approach with democracy in Indonesia, then we can make the Indonesian presidential election better for future. Um, enough and thank you. Thank you to the second speaker. You used your time very well. Okay, we will wait the adjudicators to take notes first. Okay, now we can continue to the second speaker of the negative house. Your time begins once you start speaking. Thank you for the opportunity. Firstly, please keep in mind that our motion is about Indonesia, not the other countries. So based on uh, based on law number 42 year 2008 regarding presidential and vice presidential election, direct general election is a means of implementing people's sovereignty in order to produce democratic state government based on Pancasila and the 1945 Constitution of Republic of Indonesia. It is also stated that the general election for the president and vice president shall be held in democratic and civilized manner through the widest possible participation of the people based on the principle of direct, public, free, confidential, honest, and fair to elect the president and vice president. As I said before, one of the principles of general election is direct. That means that the people as voters have the right to vote directly in general elections according to their own wishes without intermediaries. Why do we have to stop the direct election, which is a very good way to run a democratic system with the maximum possible participation of the people? And it's a system that has been carefully designed throughout our history. First thing, as our first speaker said, general electing is a constitutional right for Indonesian citizens. Article number 43, paragraph 1 and 2 of law number 39, 1999, concerning human rights, states that every citizen has the right to be elected and vote in general elections based on the equal rights through direct, public, free, secret voting, honest and fair, in accordance with the provisions of the legislations. This means direct voting is required to be held in this country to fulfill the Indonesian citizens' constitutional right. The second thing is that the direct election is the right way to minimize the political of interest in the administration of a state government because the people choose directly who will lead this country. Imagine if the election is done indirectly, then the person who will lead this country will be chosen only by a group of people. In 2022, the result of a national survey on, on Indonesian political indicators shows that the level of public trust in political parties is low. Of the 12 institutions on the list, political parties are in the lowest position with only 54% trust. This indicates that Indonesian citizens still have trust issues to the political parties in Indonesia. Then again, why should we stop the, to implement the direct voting? Then the, the third thing, theoretically, gener general elections are considered to be the earliest stage of the various series of democratic constitutional life, so that the elections are the driving force behind the mechanism of the Indonesian political system. Until now, elections are still considered as an important state event. So this is because it's involving all the people directly. Through the, through the elections, people can also convey their wishes in politics and, and the state system. Therefore, people should know the candidate well 
By implementing direct voting, Indonesian citizens can choose the leader based on the quality of the candidates. And the candidates have been passed their fit and proper test and meet the requirement ac according to law number 42 year 2008. Stages of holding of uh, the presidential and vice presidential election, including the campaign period, which in these states, candidates could do their campaign, explain their vision, their mission, be interviewed and have some debate. Therefore, citizens have chance to learn more about the candidates and decide which candidate they believe that has the capacity to lead this country in the future. So this indicates that the direct voting system is such a critical thing and need to be implemented continuously so that the, the public will have higher trust in our country leaders and will support the government even more. Thank you. Thank you to the second speaker of the negative house. Again, you use your time very effectively. Now we can continue to the third speaker of the affirmative house. Your time begins once you start speaking. Okay, thank you, moderator, ladies and gentlemen, and our honorable negative teams. Once again, this indirect election system is already in line with our country law foundation we call Pancasila as the mother of our law or undang-undang, especially number four, that democracy led by a deliberation of representative, and we can adapt it and learn with from USA, because we know USA is a big democratic country before us. And once again, adapted not means copying fully the system. Ladies and gentlemen, the indirect presidential election system is one of form of democracy and freedom of vote because the citizens still vote their presidential candidate or we know as the popular vote and also citizens vote, vote their representative or electoral college that their job is choosing the president and we know as the electoral voting which is the electoral represent the people's vote in remote area or citizens, or citizens stay outside our nation. Once again, if we are adapting this indirect system election, the vote from small province, island, even border areas still counted because they take part in voting and entrust their vote to their representative who are national or not on duty as legislator on the election day. Representative or electoral understand better about the needs of citizens on the criteria for the presidential candidates because they are well educated rather than citizen who lives in remote area or citizen who cannot read well or citizen who with no uh, education background and so on. It means that the electoral vote will be much more fair than the current direct system because with direct system, there are a lot of massive money politics given by the presidential candidates or the political parties to the citizen. And citizens only vote them because of the money, not based on the background of the presidential candidate or their strategic program that prevented the citizen. And also with this direct system, make presidential candidates only focus to gain vote in the powerful region. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, with this indirect election system, or we call it electoral college, automatically requires presidential candidates have to touch the hearts of the people in every corner of our country in order to make people and electoral whose profiles are not known to vote them based on their strategic program for our nation. And also, people will feel involved and prevent the abstention meaning the chance of hand-in-hand -hand or gotong royong is increasing. That's why we agree that Indonesia can, if, if Indonesia conducting indirect system election, because our geography is same with USA. Many regions far are far from the center of government. Many tribes in rural areas, such as in Sumatra or Papua, and there are still extreme social and educational gap that cause some people unable to vote properly. And then the result of the electoral, fo electoral votes of or the representative of citizens will be presented in the mass media. So the citizens remain involved in the vote counting process. And the electoral college have a moral burden to their vote because their vote usually same with the popular vote as same as what, as what is going to happen in America right now. Thank you. You still have a few seconds left. 
Thank you. you. That's enough. Okay. Thank you to the third speaker of the affirmative house. Before we continue, we will let the adjudicators to take a note first. Okay, now I will continue to the third speaker of the negative house. Your time begins once you start speaking. With all due respect to the opposition team, we strongly disagree. Since Independence Day until 2004, Indonesia has held nine indirect presidential elections. However, from 2004 onwards, Indonesia implemented direct elections. This raises the question, if such a change is based on Pancasila, like affirmative team said, why the election system changed to direct elections? Surely there must be a basis for a change. A legal representative of Volkar Party named Her Widodo once stated that the choice of a direct presidential election system was made to address the weaknesses of indirect election system. These weaknesses include one, restricting the broader public participation channel, two, creating a disconnect between voters and representatives, often leading to a series of public disappointment after the election, three, disrupting political communication and creating a more unfair opportunity for the elected candidates, and four, giving full power to the ruling, ruling party to determine who occupies parliamentary seats based on the party's vote conversation to the number of seats. So we believe that Indonesia shouldn't stop daring voting of presidential election. Why? Here is the reason. First, of the potential for conflicts of interest. Robert Mitchell stated in his work titled Political Parties that close candidate selection process can create opportunities for conflicts of interest. As a result, the role of power changes from serving the community to being a profit-oriented. So what benefits will the people have if they are led by a president from a political party with such a background? They will not represent the main interest of most Indonesian society. According to a study by Indonesian Corruption Watch in October 2015, conflicts of interest can potentially occur within the Indonesian parliament as its members are closely affiliated with political parties and may interfere in the presidential election if it takes place in a close manner. Out of 560 Indonesian parliament members, about 52 persons have a business background. Based on the study, the business activities of Indonesian parliament members have the potential for conflicts of interest with the authority that they hold. Therefore, in our opinion, openness to the public and active public participation in the political process are key factors in reducing potential interest within politics. Transparency and accurate access to information play a crucial role in providing the public with a better understanding of political activities, public policies, and decision-making process. This can help reduce the dominance of interest group or political elites and strengthen representation and accountability within the health of political system. As a result, the leader of our nation will be generally honest and accepted in all aspects, not just exploiting the electoral momentum to gain power and short-term interest, but also accommodating the aspiration of people and governing for the benefit of the people. Second, citizens have the freedom to vote based on the quality of the candidate. To understand the precondition leading to simultaneous early elections in 2024, poll tracking Indonesia conducted a survey in May 2020. Two, regarding the reason why the public chooses the presiden presidential candidates. The result of the survey indicate that the public's reason for choosing a candidate are 51.4% primarily based on their personal characteristic rather than selecting candidate based on party features is about 14.5%. This indicates the increasing importance of personal features as the main reference for the public in the determining the choice of the candidates. This emphasizes that citizens have the freedom to vote directly based on the qualities and character of the candidates. The personal attributes and qualities of the candidates such as leadership abilities, integrity, experience, track record, communication skills, and their vision for the country's future play a crucial role in shaping the decisions of the voters whom they believe are capable of effectively leading the nation representing their interests. That's why our house believes Indonesia should not stop the direct voting for presidential election. Thank you. Thank you very much to the third speaker of the negative house. Now we are entering to the conclusion part. 
the first team that will deliver their conclusion goes to the negative house and will be replied by the affirmative house. Okay, thank you. The affirmative team have mentioned about the money politic, but please keep in mind the level of misappropriation may be bigger in the indirect voiding system because it is considered non-public and cannot be overseen by the wider community. Twelve election trips were a lesson valuable for Indonesian democracy because the quality of election is a reflection of the quality of country's democracy. Democratic government shows a higher level of people participation, both in selecting public, official, monitoring their behavior, and in determine, determining the direction of public policy. The citizens have access to determine who should govern them, what to do, and access the successes and failures. The awareness of citizens to participate in choosing the leader of the nation, which is president, must be fully concerned. Back to previous years, Putusan Mahkamah Konstitusi Number no. 102 in 2009 is a brilliant breakthrough in the world of law in Indonesia. This is a reflection of the guarantee of citizens' constitutional rights in political participation. The Constitutional Court has reinstated the constitutional rights of Indonesian citizens, which determined that citizens who are entitled to exercise their right to vote in the general election for president and vice president. Also, the citizens have an obligation to be responsible in choosing leaders who want to regulate and manage their lives. President election had gets legitimacy from the citizen because supported by the people who gave their voice directly. Legitim legitimacy, as we know, a strong recognition from the people has an important role in convicting, convincing, influencing, and renewing political agreements that occur between government and society. The legitimacy crisis that happened to leadership in the country will result in political and economic instability for Indonesia. One thing for sure that direct voting of the president and vice president were significant steps for Indonesia on the road towards full democracy. Lastly, why should direct presidential election should be stopped if the system has been effectively implemented in Indonesia until now? So the honorable educator, from this reason and based on the evidence and data we have explained, our house strongly believe that Indonesia should continue direct voting for presidential election. Thank you. Thank you. You still have some few seconds left. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Okay, thank you to the negative house. Now the affirmative house, your time begins once you start speaking. Okay, thanks to moderator. Thanks for this opportunity. Let me conclude about some points that we want to convince the educators and all of the audience in this afternoon. We believe that indirect voting should be implemented for presidential election in Indonesia. So, allow me to set the record straight. The first is indirect selection. The Electoral College shapes presidential election campaigns in a decisive way if Indonesia, in its own right, does not eliminate the principle of democracy and independence because in indirect elections activities, there will also be democracy. For example, if the people also use their voices in elections, but the concept is the one who chooses the MPR in the election of the MPR, there is also deliberation for consensus and does not cause inequality in decision making because the MPR is not a person directly elected from the president. Indonesia should try about the electoral college and here are the points about this. One, preventing a multi-party system that raises many unknown faces because the electoral system requires political parties to carry out filtration and fit and proper tests before the names of presidential candidates appear to the public. Two, forcing presidential candidates to carry out campaigns for their work programs to all levels of society because the representatives or electors who are chosen are purely the voice of the people and do not allow the DPR who sits or holds office to participate in the election. The language of the presidential candidate is blind to his electoral identity. And three, it is cost effective to organize election because the costs are not necessary, such as the construction of polling stations in each village, which are not many and minimize the misuse of state finance for personal gain. 
Therefore, so the electoral system represents the voice of the people from the character of low education and ignorance of the voice of the people for reason number. As the team that stands for indirect voting in presidential election, we believe that we can try to implement the electoral college to get the more benefits in this democracy. Because if we never try, how do we know? Because the system will not change the basis of Indonesia with Pancasila and Undang-Undang Dasar 1945. The essence and principle is the same, but the implementation is that different. So based on the evidence practice that our team explained before, we convinced that electoral college should be implemented for better presidential election in Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you very much to the affirmative house. Now with this, the David session is finally over. Thank you for both teams and everyone did very well to deliver your opinion. And I have to praise for everyone as well because every each of you use your time very well and very effectively. So thank you. You make my job easier as a moderator. Now, but before we are continue to the breakout room session with the educators, it seems like Mrs. Gulisa Norena is present on today's match. Hello, Bu. Can you hear me? So it seems Bu Lisa can open her microphone yet, but she's here watching your match. So you should be very nervous right now because lots of people watching your match for today. Okay, now we will continue to the breakout room session with the adjudicators. Adjudicators will discuss who's going to be the winner for today's session. Um, so stand by because we'll, when we get back, we will have the winner. So you can go to toilet break or snack break, but remember to stand still until the session is officially done.
Hello, everyone. Anyone can hear my voice? Yes. Am I already in your immersive view? Because I haven't seen my face. No. <laughs> my own face. Yet. Yeah, same with me. Okay, so we are experiencing the same. I thought it might, it was my internet connection. Okay. Okay. We are back. We are already back from the discussion. So, how's everyone? Are you all guys feeling nervous? Or are you guys actually feeling relieved for because everything is already over? <laughs> wow. You can open your mic, you know, because I can't hear if anyone. Is everyone feeling nervous right now? Both feeling nervous and relieved at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was expectable. Okay, before we are going to the adjudicator session, I would like to call each team's counselor to the general atomics counselor. Are you here, sir? Sir Iwan, Mr. Iwan Kurnia, hello, are you here? Oh, wait. It seems like both of your consular is not huh? here. <laughs> I am here. Oh, right. Ah. So I hope you team is here. Sorry because I searched consular and currently you are not renamed. Okay, Butika, how are you feeling right now? Are you watching the entire debate? Uh, I'm feeling relief and that the girls are doing their best and give their best to the. <laughs> Uh, debate this time. Yeah, I'm proud of them. You should, you should be really proud of them because they are doing their best. Especially because two of them is their first time. You really did a great job of coaching them. So yeah. let's pray for the best. Okay, miss? And then the General Atomics Counselor, are you here? Yeah. <laughs> okay, if, there's, if there's not here then we'll continue to the adjudicators is the second speaker of the general atomics is here or is she away she, the second she is uh, charges the pc ah changing the device okay um give us a news on the chat box so we can adjust the immersive view to you Oh, okay, she's back. Okay, let's continue to the adjudicator session. Okay, the first adjudicator that will share the comments about today's match will be Mr. Iwan Shagani. Okay, thank you, Sasa. Uh, yeah, first, I will give yeah appreciation. Yeah, I really appreciate both of the teams. Yeah, you did a great job. Uh, actually, it's quite hard to find the winner, uh, and then especially the yeah the best speaker because uh, you did a really good job, and then you did made uh, make us uh, confused here. Yeah? Uh, but since this is the competition, we have to choose the winner. And then also because it is the bait competition, we have to uh, yeah give the 
result yeah about the um, yeah about what have you already uh, present yeah especially from the uh, countering the argument yeah from the other teams uh, when the other team uh, give the argument you have to uh, counter the argument not just reading your uh, argument that you already prepared yeah and then also you have to uh, maybe I yeah because you are so uh, what we call it yeah uh, semangat since I uh, I forget the, yeah you uh, you speak too fast yeah speak too fast and then you just read and you forget to express yourself yeah how do you argue with the with the argument from the other theme so yeah that's the that's the homework homework that you have to uh, yeah have to uh, yeah do next time when you have a debate but uh, yeah i think for me you did a great job but since yeah since this is a competition we will have to choose the winner but uh, i really appreciate you and then uh, you uh, must be proud of yourself thank you very much sasa Thank you very much to Mr. Iwan Chagani. And then the second educators that will give the comments is Mr. Arif Budiman. Oops, sir. Thank you, Sasa. Wow, uh, it's really great the debate. So I really enjoy the process. Um, at this point, actually, I feel that both of houses already know what you you should do about the rebuttal and both houses already also have a good uh, data. And yeah, but uh, one thing for sure, Mr. Iwan, Mr. Iwan already said that about the pace, about the speed. I know that in debating, uh, you can read your script, your uh, note, but remember debate is about all, also delivering your message. To the audience, to the uh, your your opponent and your adjudicator, I think that's the another important thing. And yeah, I have already um, note some uh, comment for each of the speaker, but I I think I the time it will not be uh, available if I read all of them. Um. Yes, so if you guys, uh, affirmative house or negative house uh, goes to the final, just keep remember your uh, job, each speaker, your, 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 um, what to do and what to, what your um, uh, task. The third speaker, don't say a new argument, just rebuttal. The second speaker, strong data the first speaker strong standing i think that's the the basic uh, of the uh, task of the speaker each speaker and and in this session of debating um yeah the score is um almost the same so i think we for uh, as adjudicators it's quite hard to um uh decide which house is, is the winner. But let's see what Miss Dena uh, notes. And Miss Dena, are, are, are we going to say about the, the, the to choose the, the best speaker or later? Is it now or later? To, to say the, the best speaker from its adjudicator. I can't hear your voice. Maybe later, okay. Yeah, I think that's all for me, Rasa. Uh, thank you, affirmative house and negative house. Good job.
<clears throat> okay, thank you to Mr. Arif Budiman. And now the third adjudicator is Mr. Andi Asrul. Can give your comment. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, first of all, I would like to say uh, congratulations for uh, both team uh, for a uh, good and outstanding debate for today. And I think that technically it has been delivered by both educator before, uh, pa, uh, pa Arif sama, uh, and pa Iwan. And uh, I, maybe I will, uh, I will, uh, uh, how to say, I will uh, give my comment to both of team. First of all, uh, it is about time management. And you guys, both of the team can deliver the speech uh, effectively and well. And I think that that is the something that we have to appreciate about. And uh, but I think that there is uh, there is some likeness that I intend to uh to deliver uh for uh, for example from uh the de delivery uh point of view uh as uh, as the first and the second adjudicator has mentioned before that again in a debating it's not it is not about how how strong your argument but in how to deliver the argument uh you deliver by using your heart so in order we can uh also a save it by using our heart and i think that uh that is one of the things that make the negative team uh is better in delivering than the affirmative one because uh, uh as, as we have uh discussed before that uh uh the affirmative is a uh, theme uh, is tend to uh, like yeah just write the script no not deliver what the information that they intend to leave but overall they have a good argument they have a strong argument uh so yeah uh, i think that that is enough for me thank you uh miss sasa for the time okay thank you mr asrul now that three adjudicators have been giving their comments i hope everyone taking notes because um, their comments is very important as a debater is the the first thing is that you need to deliver your research very well you can prepare you can read your you can read what you have prepared but remember to deliver your message well because um it's no use if you have a very strong argument argument but people the audience and your opponent can understand what you meant and then the second of all is you all need to know each of your role because each, each speaker have their own role. So stick with your own role. Okay, now I will give the time to Miss Dana to announce, to give her comment and to announce the winner. So you really, you're gonna be really nervous right now. <laughs> Thank you, Natasha. Okay, uh, debaters. Well, I'm I'm proud that you have done your homework. I mean, you've already done did research on data to uh, do, to defense or your or to oppose um, the proposal. However, as as Sasha already had um, even a resume, I would like to emphasize that debating is about communications. Communications is how to how to make sure that your message understood. And the second thing about debating is how to try to convince the judges, the adjudicators. And to do that, you have to look convincing, you have to sound convincing. You have to look convincing by uh, making sure your eye contact, body language, or you have to sound convincing by making sure you have the right intonations, you chose the right words, just because you can't convince the others if you yourself are not convinced. Um, however, um, we have uh, all the adjudicators have chosen their best speakers um, their, of uh, tonight's match, and I, I think Pak Yuan already uh, decided that he thought that the negative second speaker was the best, wasn't it, Pak Yuan? And uh, Pak Arif Budiman chosen uh, the negative third. Was it negative third, Pak pa Arif? Or no, it's affirmative. Third. Oh, affirmative, sorry. Yeah. I got mixed up with uh, yeah. Mas Asrul. Uh, okay, the third affirmative is uh, the best uh, speaker and uh, uh, Andy Asrul uh, chose the negative third speaker as the best speakers. 
And I myself chose um, the second speaker of the affirmative house uh, as the best speaker, not because he got, um, he made sure that convinced me, but why I gave a uh, second speaker of the negative side of the house is the best speaker because she has done a really extensive research how to make um, uh, on their uh, on their arguments. However, this is another. However, I have I think I have said three times. However, um, <laughs> so affirmative side of the house, you have the privilege to define and determine where the directions of debate. Uh, unfortunately, you fail to do so for my, from my point of view. I mean, if this is, I was expecting a proposal debate. I was expecting a proposal debate. For example, if the affirmative side of the house already said that I mean, we propose that electoral college uh, is the best uh, to uh, change the direct voting currently implementing Indonesia, then the negative house, they have to oppose that proposal. And you stick to the proposal from, fir from uh, your first speaker to the third speakers. Uh, but yes, as I, as I said before, uh, affirmative side of the house have done really extensive research. And so, have, uh, so it was really uh, well done, a job well done from you. Uh, and the uh, uh, negative side of the house already has done a really good job in um, re uh, make rebuttals of uh, the motions, not the proposal, of the motions. Uh, so actually, so both of you have strength and, and weakness. And I also, I also agree with the comments that the third speaker of the affirmative side of the house have done a really good job in making rebuttals. So thank you, the comment, uh, the chat. The one who commented in the chat. Oh, oh, sorry, Parim. I thought it was a supporters. Yeah. So the speaker of the affirmative side of the house, you have done a really good job. Um, and uh, with that, for my comments of this debate, um, and for the winner of this debate, the adjudicators have um, we agree. Both all adjudicators agree that the winner of this debate. He has slightly stronger um, proposal and arguments are the neg negative side of the house. Congratulations, how you team. Thank you, Masaya. For the negative powers. Congratulations, how you team. Congratulations, how you team. So, congratulations to the how you team. And, and welcome to the Carlos. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. So, congratulations for making it in, making it into the grand finale. See you in Jakarta soon. You will meet me probably as an audience probably because I will watching everyone's final. So you will meet me offline. So prepare yourself. Do your best because the grand finale will be held offline at BPJS Kesehatan Headquarters or Kantor Pusat in Jakarta. And you sure know. Everyone should know that. The special one will be there to witness your match, right? So you prepare yourself for the debate. More details will be announced soon on Telegram group and through the official letter from Corp, okay? And then I appreciate it too uh, for the General Atomic, the affirmative house that show us incredible performance. You may not win today, but you have won this competition in our hearts. You show a really good battle and um, considering that this is your first time debate, the three of you is your first time, you did really, really well, especially to the third speaker because, because you win the best speaker from Paris. You really did your best. I agree with him, actually. You're really, really good today. So I actually can believe that this is your first time debate. Okay. I will closing the match now. Thank you everyone for joining today's match. Thank you for our adjudicators for your time. And thank you for the team's counselor for coaching your lovely teams. And then thank you for the supporters that have been um, really, really wilding on the chat box. See you in final, see you in the real world. And also on, for General Atomic, see you on the match for the third place, okay?
good luck for the next debate see you thank see you, you. Oh, 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 Congratulations, negative house. Thank you, everyone. Good job. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. See you on Monday, General Atomics. <laughs>